Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So Solomon elicited this pithy bit of wisdom in the sixth verse of the 22nd chapter of Proverbs. And considering that Solomon had a thousand wives, chances are he had plenty of children by which to test this slice of proverbial wisdom. What does Solomon mean by this proverb? Simply put, the training and admonition that a child receives will yield a harvest of righteousness as long as that training and admonition are rooted, according to Ephesians 6, in the Lord. Is Solomon offering his readers, though, a guarantee? Does this proverb come with a warranty? If one of our students that we teach in our Christian schools, if one of the children that we homeschool in our Christian homeschools, if they leave the confines of our educational environment untrained in the way that they should go, can the child's parents send him or her back and have him or her repaired, trade him in for a more efficient model? No, of course it doesn't work like that. It's unlikely that Solomon is offering up some sort of a guarantee. But it's just as unlikely that Solomon was not dead serious when he offered up this proverbial admonition. Someone will train up the children that come to our Christian schools, our classical Christian schools, that we homeschool within the confines of a Christian home. Somebody is going to train up those children in the way that they should go. If we as teachers, as parents, if we do not answer the call, if we do not take seriously the task that is set before us by Solomon and Paul in Ephesians and Moses in Deuteronomy and in many other places within the scriptures, then social media or our pagan progressive culture or the Marvel Cinematic Universe or whatever else comes along comes a child's way will catechize and train up that child. Something is going to fill that void. Sure, a child could do a lot worse than emulating Captain America, but a robust biblical education, and as a classical Christian educator, I would add a robust classical Christian education aims higher than Chris Evans in a leotard. Now, I don't doubt for an instance that there are parents and teachers absolutely dedicated to passing on the paideia of the Christian West to our children. I am one of those parents and classical Christian educators, and I know many other such folks within and without of the movement. This is not a rebuke. This is not even simply a reminder. This is a calling. This is our calling. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We ought to believe that that is true, good, and beautiful, because it is. When we give our students, when we give our children a robust biblical education, classical Christian education, we are giving them what a good farmer gives to his crops. The soil is tilled and readied. The seed is planted at the proper time. The field is watered and provided with proper sunlight, and the crops are picked at harvest time. Likewise, our students, our children, are taught things like the liberating arts of the trivium and the quadrivium. We expose them to the great works of the West, to the entire canon of the scriptures. We model virtue to them, and we have their characters cultivated by us, the master gardeners who love them. When the harvest comes, they lead lives of virtue, they display mature character, they love learning, and they serve the triune God, if I may so shamelessly rip off my own school's mission statement. And those children will not soon depart from it. Do not simply take my word for it. Look no further than the Good Soil Report that was released by the Association of Classical and Christian Schools, which I'll link to in the description box. Data point after data point in that report demonstrates that specifically a classical Christian education, but a robust, biblically-centered Christian education with its eye towards the past and the tradition of the West, that that cultivates young men and young women who hold to biblical fidelity and hold on to their Christian faith after graduation and beyond. Let us wake up every morning palpably aware of the most righteous and worthy task given to us by our Lord, ready and eager to put the wisdom of Solomon into practice. Let us train up our students, let us train up our children 
in the way that they should go, and when they are old, they will not soon depart from it.